Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan, and I'm going to give you an overview of AP Bio Investigative Lab 4. It's all about diffusion and osmosis. So I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller and get in presentation mode here. All right. So um, in this lab, you are going to first, you're going to be looking at some models of how fluids would move across a pretend, a pretend membrane, which is basically called dialysis tubing. And then in the second part of the lab, you're gonna use real cells. You're gonna use potato cells and um, be able to calculate water potential. So let me walk you through that. So first thing, this is the, there is a printout of this book. Um, in the lab map that I'm giving you, I'm giving you a digital PDF version of your lab. I really encourage you to read through the entire lab um, because the College Board was the author of this lab and they're the ones that are testing you. So I'm picking and choosing different parts of it for you to try out, all right? So we have two pre-labs that we're gonna do on day one of the lab and um, we're gonna be looking at the process of diffusion. Remember diffusion is just going from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. We're gonna be looking at how a substance would move from one side of a membrane to another side of the membrane and whether or not it could get across that membrane. Um, part two, we're gonna look at molarity. Osmosis is the diffusion of water, specifically across the semi-permeable membrane. And we're gonna be creating some different scenarios and look to see how much water moves. Ultimately, the driving question we have is what causes my plants to wilt if I forget to water them? And hopefully you will understand it as we do these pre-labs. And then the second part of your investigative lab is you're going to look at the water potential of potatoes and try to understand why water would move in or out, just like your plant if you forget to water it. All right. I know that's a lot. I'll walk you through it. So the first thing you're going to need to learn is um, just some we're gonna work with some different solutions and you, you need to understand their color and how you can tell if they have moved or not, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna open up your lab map. And this right here is a link to your lab map. And I encourage you, one member of your lab team to open it and share it with the entire team because you can record some of your initial observations there and then transfer it into your um, actual lab notebook, all right? So you're going to look at iodine. I'll I'll show you pictures of that. You'll look at the initial color. You'll mix it with water. You'll mix it with starch. You'll mix it with glucose and see what colors it change. And you're also going to dip what's called a glucose test strip that is normally used in your urinalysis. And you're going to look to see how it changes in these different solutions. That will set us up okay for this um, first part of this pre-lab where you are going to put um, some water and iodine in a beaker and then in this what's called dialysis tubing you're going to put um, a little bit of starch and a little bit of glucose now you should know from our four important organic molecules between starch and glucose glucose would be considered a monomer right and starch is a polymer so which one is smaller glucose and so you could make some predictions do you think glucose is going to be able to get out of this bag do you think starch is going to be able to get out of this bag do you think water or iodine can get into the bag and so we'll have i have a data table already set up so we can take in that information now dialysis tubing is uh kind of feels like a stiff uh, plastic bag, um, but when you, when you put it in water, it loosens up and it looks something like this. These particular, that's open on either end, so if you wanna make it like a pretend cell, if we're gonna model a cell, you have to tie off either end with string and you have to cut the ends off there and um, you can put solutions in there and then tie off the other end. Let me show you an example right here. Okay, so they took this dialysis tubing, tied off one end, you use a syringe to add whatever solution you wanna put in there, and then you get all the excess air out of the tubing and tie off the other end, that way it can expand. So we will be doing that, this first part, our pre-lab, just getting to know our solutions and colors they might change, how they would change, and then we're gonna move into this modeling and using dialysis tubing as a model and looking to see if starch or glucose or water or iodine can move in or out of this bag and we'll make some conclusions there okay then the next one we will model 
okay, is you're gonna take a beaker of water and your lab team is gonna be assigned three different molarities of solution. So of going from zero to one molar of a sucrose solution. Do you remember what sucrose is? It is a disaccharide, right? So it's gonna be bigger than glucose because sucrose is glucose plus fructose and that's table sugar, so it's a little bit bigger. So we'll see how it behaves. And in this model, we'll pull our data together because what you'll do is you'll put in um, um, you'll put in five mils or so. I might change it to three, actually. I'll give you on the day of. And you'll put your solution inside your bag. You'll, you'll tie off the other end. You'll mass it on a scale and record that. You'll put it in your beaker of water for about 30 minutes. Well, exactly 30 minutes. And then you'll pull it out and you will mass it. And we'll see if it gains mass or loses mass. So you can imagine as your molarity increases inside the bag, we would predict more water to be able to move into this bag. It's going to be important that water has room because otherwise the membrane is going to kind of push back and not allow water to enter. So we have to have room for it to expand. We will be recording that. Um, I'll come back to this in just a minute. We'll be recording that in this data table. I've already provided it for you in the lab map and you'll put it in your lab notebook. So you will have your, you won't need to do all of these. You'll be doing three of these solutions. You'll take your initial mass, your final mass, your percent change in mass. I've given you the equation here, final minus initial over initial. You'll do your percent change in mass and you're gonna add that to our class data table like we did with the M&M labs. And we'll get a class average for each of these solutions. We're gonna throw out any outliers. If it looks like you did not do your lab well, we're not gonna use your data. Um, that's not a good situation, um, but we'll take class averages. And then from that, we'll see if we can see any trends. So I'm gonna give you plastic beakers that are already labeled and water is going to go in the beaker but what that label represents is the dialysis tubing that you put in there it's going to have a molarity of a solution that you put in there and i want you to not confuse those because the dialysis tubing when you look at it there there's no way to label this dialysis tubing so we're labeling the beaker but um, so if your beaker says 0.2 molar sucrose, that's the sucrose solution in your dialysis tubing that you're putting in there. The beaker itself is gonna hold water, okay? And what we will learn in class, or what we've already learned, is water must flow from the hypo. So water's gonna flow from the hypotonic solution out here in the beaker into your sucrose solution. And it's gonna move from a higher water potential to a lower water potential. So the more osmotically active substances you have here in your dialysis tubing, we would expect more water to move in there, okay? Those are parts of the pre-lab. Um, then the lab where we use not, we're not gonna model by using any dialysis tubing in this, in this investigative lab that you're gonna do. You're actually gonna use a potato and you're gonna look to see how its mass changes under different molarities of solutions so that you can predict its water potential. So that process, when we do that, okay, I wanna remind you about water potential. And so here is a chunk of potato right here. And remember water potential is a factor of two things solute potential and pressure potential. And when you first dump this potato in here, it's not gonna have any cell walls pushing back. It's just chilling, right? And so its pressure potential is gonna be zero of the potato cells, but because there's sugars or starches dissolved in each cell, its solute potential is negative. Remember, pure distilled water, the water potential is zero. And as you add anything to that water, the water potential becomes negative. So this potato cell is resting here at negative three for water potential. Now your pure water, there's no pressure, there's no plunger on here, so the pressure potential is zero. There's nothing in it because it's distilled water, so it's at the maximum water potential you can be, and that is zero because there's no solutes in it. Well, water is always gonna flow from a higher water potential to a lower water potential. So zero is actually the best water potential in this scenario, and the water is gonna flow from um, the beaker into this potato who has a negative three water potential. And it's gonna to continue to flow in and continue to flow in until their two water potentials are the same. How is that gonna happen? 
Well, as water flows in and the vacuoles swell up, then what's going to happen is it's going to keep swelling and keep swelling. And pretty soon the wall is going to start to push back and push water out. And when it pushes it out at a force of three, which equals the solute potential that says come in. So if the come in is negative three, but the cell walls are pushing back to the tune of plus three, then that is a net water potential of zero. And then you will have no more net movement. You're still going to have water coming in and water coming out, but there's going to be no net change. What we're trying to find with our potatoes is what molarity do we need to put them in where there is no net change? Because once we know that, Okay, then the factor here, when there's no, when the pressure potential is zero, then water potential will just be a factor of the solute potential, and we can calculate it from there. So um, look at this scenario right here, okay? The solute, uh, this the, in the beaker, okay, there's no pressure on it, so the pressure potential is zero, but the solute potential, because somebody's put a bunch of sugar in here, is at negative 12, okay, because it's not pure water. This potato, there's no net movement because what's happened at this point is this potato, it was left out to dry. It's probably dehydrated a little bit. It's down to negative 15. But so water has started to move in because this solution was at minus 12, right? It's going to keep moving in until the wall pushes back a factor of three. And then three plus negative 15 is minus 12. This solute out here. Uh, this solvent out here with all of its sugars in it, it's also at minus 12, so there's going to be no net change. Okay, so here you're going to use a potato core. You're going to be careful so you don't core your hand, and you're going to get three um, potato cores of, um, of three centimeters long, and you'll weigh those because you want it to be the same, right? Those are the constants in the experiment is we're all going to use the same number of potato cores, and they're going to be the same size. They're not going to have any skin on them. And so you're going to core out your potato, and then what you're going to do, these are french fries, but I couldn't find any potato cores for my picture here. You're going to put your potato cores, and you're going to be assigned the same three solutions you used earlier when you were modeling with dialysis tubing. Those are going to be the solutions you're assigned to for your potato cores. But now the solution is going to go in a little cup, and you're going to put your potatoes in there. We're going to obviously mask the potatoes before and after, and we're going to leave them there overnight so we can give them time um, to equilibrate in that solution, right? And we're going to mask them afterwards and see what um, how much it changed. Now, you will have access to all those solutions. You'll use the uh, bigger syringe when you need to put some in your cup. And you'll use a little syringe when you need to put that into your dialysis tubing for that earlier part of the lab. But you will put your potatoes in little cups. We'll label them, let them sit out overnight. Then we will mask them. So your team, you will have just three molarities assigned to you. Your initial mass of your potatoes, your final, your percent change in mass. We'll do core share data. Um, to get averages, throwing out any outliers, and then you're going to plot this on a graph. You would expect some of the potatoes that were put in distilled water, they should swell as the water moves into the potato, right? But then as the water becomes more and more syrupy, the potato itself is going to have the greater water potential and water is going to move out. So some potatoes will gain weight, other potatoes will lose weight. And what we're going to do is do a best made line through and we're going to predict the molarity sucrose molarity we should have used so that it would not gain or lose so it was the same water potential right and the reason why we want to do that is we can eliminate the factor of the cell wall pushing back if it's at the same molarity if we can find the sucrose molarity where it's the same as the molarity of the uh, the the water potential, right, of that potato plant, then um, the, the cell wall won't be a factor. And so to calculate that, and you're going to use this little formula right here. Well, the solute potential equals negative ICRT. And um, I stands for ionization constant. We're using sucrose, so it doesn't ionize, so it's just one. Notice it's negative ICRT. C is the molar concentration from our graph where we would predict, we would make our best made line through here and we would predict 
let's say here in this particular one, let's say it's 0.3 molar, then we would put 0.3 molar, which means moles per liter. This is a pressure constant. So that's the same for everybody. And then this right here is in Kelvin, it's temperature. And so to get Kelvin, you take the degree Celsius of the solution. So we have to get that, add it to 273. And then that will give your Kelvin. So we, you know, we need to take that when we do the lab. You multiply that all together, and basically you will get the solute potential. And since the pressure potential is zero, then the water potential is a factor of only the solute potential. So then you would know the solute potential of that potato. All right. And depending on what kind of environment you put it in, you could predict whether that potato would gain or lose mass. Right. And whether your plants would wilt. So I want to go back. Um, I know that's a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but this is a big lab. We'll be just starting it one day and then doing it two days after that. But you can see here, I'll give you a potato. You will, when you core your potatoes, this is a potato core right here. When you jam it through the potatoes, you want to cut off the reason why you have this plastic knife here, which you're going to be careful with. You don't have any peel. And you're going to keep it in this, um, in, in this little Petri dish because it will want to dry out and water will leave your potatoes and that'll affect your experiment, right? So you want to make sure that your potatoes do not dry out. So you'll keep them here before you get them in your, um, into your lab and in between when you mass them. Okay, I want to go back to the lab map and explain that. So let me just, let me move over here. Here we go. Okay, so let's, that's a link. Hopefully I'm going to pop up right here any second. See, we'll let it load just for a minute. Let's see. Okay, I didn't pop up over there. So I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna wanna go through. Let me pause this just for a minute. 